welcome. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for taking time out of your day to focus in on the things of God. Today I want us to ask a question that if you haven't thought of it, I'm sure someone in your life has brought it up. I want us to think about why we even need Christianity. What is it about Christianity that's so important? And we're going to look at Psalm 37. We're going to read the whole psalm. So in Psalm 37, starting in verse 1, it says, Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out wicked schemes. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In times of famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. You know, during the year, a couple of the holidays we celebrate, Easter and Christmas, are holidays that have been adapted by the world, by society over the years. And they've incorporated things like bunnies and trees and whatever else may be a part of it. Not necessarily things that were intended to be celebrated at that point, but things that have been given uh, sort of, I guess, spiritual meanings by people over the years. But most people look at things like Christmas and Easter as just holidays. They don't see it as a special holy time. And I think a big part of the problem is that when a lot of people look at Christianity, they see it more as a religion than they do anything else. And that's one of the reasons, I think, why so many people actually hate Christianity, because they've been turned off by the religion. They've been turned off by the church, someone in the church said or did something that upset them. But here's the thing. We have to get beyond religion and realize exactly why Christianity and Jesus are so important. Because all over the world, people are asking, why is Christianity so important? Well, I think Psalm 37 gives us the answer to that. It compares the righteous and the wicked, uh, the people who have God in their lives versus the people who don't. And I think one of the things you see right away is that we need Christianity to change our nature. You think about this. By ourselves, all we can be is sinners. Our nature 
as human beings is flawed. In fact, if we were given just two choices, a lot of times we're going to choose the wrong thing. Think about Adam and Eve. They only had one choice to make, <laughs> and they made the wrong decision. So we need something to change us from wicked to righteous, from unsaved to Christian. The Bible says uh, that there really are only two kinds of people. There are righteous people and unrighteous people. It may talk about things like the wheat and the chaff and other things. But Jesus told Nicodemus, and it's still true of us today, he said, you must be born again. And Christianity gives us the opportunity to be born again. And if anybody challenges that fact of why we need Christianity, all they have to do is look around and see the need. Left to our own devices, we've put our planet and our society on the edge of destruction. You know, I, I hear people sometimes complain about different issues going on in the, in the world and, and in our country. And sometimes things will happen that uh, will cause other people to look at Christians and say, well, I feel like these conservative evangelical Christians are, are running our lives. No, Christians aren't running the country. If Christians were running the country, it would look very different than it does right now. If you look at what's going on in the world, you see exactly why we need Christ in our country. Look at all the laws, for example, that are being broken on a daily basis. All the horrible things that are going on that require us to have more and more prisons. It's horrible. That's just one example. Human nature is sinful. And sin is one of the native qualities of the human heart. So we need Christianity as an agent of change for our sinful nature. That's one thing. But we also need Christianity to change the spirit of our lives. If you look back in that Psalm 37, you can see the characteristics of the wicked, or we might say the unsaved in this situation. Verse 9 says that they're cut off without hope. Verse 10 says they will be no more after a while. Verse 12 says they plot against the righteous. Verse 14 says they use violence to bring down the poor and needy. Verse 20 says the wicked will perish. Verse 21 says they borrow and do not repay. All those qualities show more than show us what the ruling spirit is in, in most human beings. But the spirit of the world and the spirit of the saved are opposite poles. You know, regardless of what some people may think, the spirit of the world is hate and the spirit of Christ is love. The spirit of the world is to get as much as they can but the Spirit of Christ is giving. The Spirit of the world is selfish. The Spirit of Christ is self-sacrifice. In Philippians chapter 2 and verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Until we turn our lives over to Jesus Christ, the spirit of the world will be the dominant force in our lives. And we need Christianity to change the ruling spirit of our lives from the spirit of the world to the spirit of Christ. Without the spirit of Christ, the things of the world will make perfect sense to you and you'll want to defend the things of the world. You won't do that if you have the spirit of Christ in you. But then a final thing, we need Christianity to change the ultimate destiny of our lives. In verse 22 we read, it says, those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. This is the same idea that Jesus was teaching in John chapter 15 when he talked about himself being the true vine and the father being the gardener and how uh, every branch that bears fruit he, he prunes while if a, a, a vine doesn't pr uh, produce fruit, he cuts it off. And he says that no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. And he tells us as Christians that neither can we bear spiritual fruit unless we remain in him. And this is where Jesus says in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing. 
See, the Bible is very clear about the fact that the destiny of the wicked is different from the destiny of the saved. In fact, in that same passage I was just referencing, Jesus said, if you do not remain in him, you're like a branch that's thrown away and withers. He said, such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. There are different destinies. And we get to choose the destiny we reach in eternity. Left to our own sinful devices, we're not going to inherit eternity with God. We need something that shows us how deep our need is and then points us to the answer of the problem that we have. That's what Christianity does. We need Christianity because we need to be changed. Nothing but the the blood of Jesus Christ can change a person. You might remember when Pilate gave the crowd the chance to choose who they were going to set free. They could choose Jesus or Barabbas, and the crowd chose Barabbas. And after they chose Barabbas, Pilate asked them an important question. He said, what shall I do then with this Jesus who is called the Christ? That's the question you have to answer. What are you going to do with Jesus? We have to look at Christianity as more than a religion because it's far more than that. It's something that God uses to turn us away from our sinful nature and turn us to Him. It's something I hope you have in your life. If you don't, I'm going to pray for you right now. I'd ask you to join me in this prayer. And I hope you'll be willing to be open, at least, to God's leading in your life. Maybe you're, you're, you're realizing that things in your life just aren't what you know they should be. I want you to know today that Jesus Christ is the answer. And if you would, allow him to enter into your heart and change your life forever. Let's pray together. Lord, I'm thankful that we're able to share this time together. And Lord, I pray that you'll guide those that are hearing the sound of my voice as we pray together now that they would search their own hearts and that they would allow you by the Holy Spirit to convict them of the things that are going on in their lives and that you would use this time as a way of drawing them closer to you and ultimately leading them to that salvation that we all need so desperately. We're thankful that we have the hope of being children of God, of being Christians, of being saved. And we commit all of these things to you in Jesus' name. Amen.